Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube. You can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air dates August 11th, 1947, and the title is The Voluntary Captive. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I am Silver! Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, had taken the white stallion silver to a blacksmith in a nearby town while the Lone Ranger waited in their camp. As Tonto, riding scout and leading silver, approached the camp upon his return trip, his keen eyes detected something unusual. He immediately reined up and dismounted. Oh, scout. Oh, scout. Oh, father. Oh. It, it looked like old man camp stealing food. Not see Lone Ranger. Me catch thief. Moving without a sound, the wary Indian swiftly approached the intruder. Tonto noticed, though the man's back was turned, that he seemed old and unkempt. Stopping a short distance from the man, Tonto waited a moment. Then, drawing his gun, he spoke sharply. Do not take food. Me not like shoot old man. No, no. Please, senor Indian, do not kill poor Juan Gonzalez. Me not see your horse. How you get here, old man? Please... 
It is that I am most poor Mexican pay on. Such poor horses I had, she die on the trail. Well, it not good you steal, but me not shoot old man. Uh, me see you not have gun. That is so true, Senor Indian. But perhaps I think you no. What, uh, Senor? It is I, Juan Gonzalez, who have the gun. What me? Me not savvy. Me plenty strong, <laughs> but you <laughs> took you by surprise, Adolfo. Kim a savvy. <laughs> Oh, you fool, Tonto Plenty. Me think you're really old Mexican. <laughs> Good. If I can fool you with this disguise, it ought to fool others, Tonto. But why you wear disguise? When we rode here into New Mexico, I told you we came here for an important reason. Not right. But you not say what reason. You didn't ask why we made the long trip to Santa Fe. I decided to wait until we were down here near the border before I told you. Well, me know you tell when ready. While you waited in camp outside Santa Fe when I went into town alone... My purpose was to meet the new Indian agent sent there by the president. Ah, uh, me hear about him. His name is James Calhoun. I learned through the padre that Calhoun wanted to see me. Well, what him want from Lone Ranger, Kimasabi? The day I went to see him, I rode directly to his office in Santa Fe. I wore a disguise instead of a mask, as you know. Well, Mr. Calhoun wasted no time getting right to the point. He... Now, the reason I sent for you is this. In taking this new territory, the United States has assumed a responsibility that has become an embarrassment to our government. What do you mean by that, Mr. Calhoun? I mean, sir, that last year, in 1848, we signed the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty with Mexico. In Article 2 of that treaty, the United States bound itself to restrain the Indians from raids into Mexico and to prevent Mexicans being taken captive by them. Yes, I know. The responsibility is a great one. Uh, according to Governor Bent's report, there are about 40,000 Indians in the new territory. Yes. Now, I've had reports and complaints that conditions along the border are bad. Mexican men, and especially women and children, they disappear from their homes and turn up as captives among the Apaches. They're traded from one tribe to another as slaves. I see. Well, what do you want me to do? I think you can help greatly, sir. I will if I can. Now, we're camped near the border... Across the river from Las Cruces is a small tribe of Apaches under Chief Coloradus. I've heard of Chief Mangus Coloradus. And you know he's sly, intelligent, alert. That's right. With him are two brothers, half-breeds, Red Fox and Little Wolf. It's my opinion they're responsible for a great deal of the trouble. Though I can't get proof. Has anyone tried to get the proof, sir? Oh, yes. I sent a small detachment of troops down there under Lieutenant Jones. He'd... Well, I'll call in the lieutenant. Have him tell you. Very well. Well, Jones, will you come in a moment, please? Yes, of course, sir. Lieutenant Jones, meet Mr. Uh, uh, you may call me Granger, sir. Glad to meet you, sir. Uh, thank you. Jones, I'd like to have you tell Mr. Granger what conditions are as you found them along the border recently. All right. I had a detachment of troops down there. We kept tabs on the Apaches, especially Chief Colorado's tribe. But they seem fairly quiet and content. Uh, Mr. Calhoun tells me Mexican captives are being brought through. How do you account for that, sir? If I could account for it, Mr. Granger, I'd have put a stop to it while I was down there. In which case, Mr. Calhoun wouldn't have needed to ask your help. I see. Then you know why I'm here. I thought nobody knew why I sent for you, Mr. Granger. How did you know, Jones? Well, I, uh was more or less guessing, sir. It really doesn't matter, Mr. Calhoun, since Lieutenant Jones is as anxious as we are to put a stop to the Apaches. That's right, Mr. Granger. That sort of thing must be stopped at any cost. I agree with you. Jones has received a transfer from his post here in Santa Fe to a newly established post in Las Cruces, or down near the border. Well, that's interesting. Did you ask for the transfer, Lieutenant? Why, yes. Oh. Yes, I did. I feel I'll be in position to watch further developments among the Apaches down there. If you tell me your plans, perhaps I can be of service to you. Well, so far, I have no plans. But if I need your help, Lieutenant, I'll get in touch with you at Los Cruces. Now, Mr. Calhoun, that's all the information you have for me. I'll make preparations to leave for the border at dawn tomorrow. So, that's the reason, Tonto, that I've disguised myself as an old Mexican peon. Now, my plan is to be taken captive by the Apaches of Chief Colorado's tribe. But Kimasabi... That plenty risky. Apaches treat captives heap bad, make them suffer much. 
I hope I can endure whatever suffering they might inflict, Tonto, till I find out what I want to know. No, me not let you go, Kimasabi. Maybe them find you not Mexican. Then them torture, kill you. <laughs> the risk won't be too great if you work along with me. Well, what me do? Now, the Wikiups of Chief Colorado's tribe are located southwest of here, across the border from Ciudad Juarez. We'll ride that way. When we get close to their village, I'll leave Silver and my guns with you. Now, uh, no matter what you see going on, don't attempt to help me unless I signal you. See, I'm prepared to go through most anything to stop this enslavement of Mexicans. Well, we'll leave on our mission tonight, Toto. Dawn will soon be breaking, Tonto. It'll soon be time for us to separate. Ah, uh, me already see sign. We coming near to Apache village. Be careful, Tonto. The Apaches find out that you're keeping watch. Go hard for both of us. Me be careful. Wait, Kimasabi. Oh, so oh, 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 father. Bark on the dogs come from Indian village. We not go closer. Right. Easy, steady. Big shot. Here are my guns. Take care of Silver. Keep him and Scout well hidden, but handy for a quick getaway. Ah, you do it. <laughs> we'll be together again soon, old boy. Steady. Now, Tonto, in this disguise as an old Mexican, I'll go from here on foot toward the Apache village. One of the early scouting parties will be sure to capture me and take me in. I mean, still not like ID. I'll be all right. Adios, Tonto. Adios, Kimasabe. Me be waiting. Watch it. About two hours after sunrise, Chief Colorado heard a commotion outside his wiki up. He went to the entrance and stepped outside. Uma Olate! Red Fox, tell Chief why braves gather here with much noise. See, Chief. Mexican captive, me, Red Fox, and Brother Little Wolf bring to village. Him, see, eat many summers, old Chief, but in his limbs there is still strength for much labor. Me have look. Bring captive here. Ah, you come, stand before Chief. Please, please, senor chief. I Juan Gonzalez. He mean no harm to Indians. My horse, she run away. Why you talk of Mexico? How to treat Chief Colorado, old man? See, si, see. Si. But it is to ask, senor chief, that you have you mercy. Hear him, little wolf. Say bow. Oh. Oh. As the Lone Ranger, in his disguise of an old Mexican, fell from the force of the heavy blow and heard the jeers and laughter of the Indians watching, he clenched his fists in anger and fought back the impulse to strike at his tormentors. Then, realizing that everything depended upon his ability to take punishment, he pretended to grovel at the chieftain's feet. Please, please, senor chief. Juan Gonzalez, he is old and harmless. He is trying for to be friend to Indians, huh? You take old man to your wiki up, Red Fox. Him help mash corn. Him help gather wood for fires. Him help build wiki ups. Go. Hajon. You come. You work too little, Red Fox. Make them old Mexican coyote yell, keep loud. Go now to wiki up a Red Fox. See, see, Senor Red Fox. Please do not beat Juan Gonzalez more. I go. See, si, senor, I go with Why you. Why The Lone Ranger was not left alone long. Within half an hour, Red Fox put him to work with a group of squaws mashing corn in the hot sun. All day long, without food or water, he worked at this menial task amid the jeers and laughter of the squaws and braves. But the Lone Ranger's fine physique and clean outdoor mode of living stood him in good stead. And though outwardly he assumed the weariness that would have been natural for an old man, inwardly he was strong and alert. Though the fine dust which arose from the dry corn he was mashing between two heavy stones <coughs> smarted his eyes and parched his throat. <coughs> At sundown, the squaws left him to do their cooking. Then Red Fox, followed by several braves, approached. Uh, you mash some corn no faster than squaw, old man. <laughs> Juan Gonzalez, he do his best, Senor Red Fox. Ah, uh, it is enough. Gracias. Maybe old Mexican feel him hunger, have him thirst for water. Gracias, see, 
Si, senor Indian. The hunger and thirst she is very great within one Gonzalez. Uh, it's not good for old man be hungry. Little wolf, you come help him Red Fox feed feeble Mexican. Uh, me help him Red Fox. See, si. me take him up handful dry corn. Him work hard to mash. Now old man eat him. But senor, I cannot. That mashed corn, she is but dry dust. <laughs> you make a mouth open, little wolf. Uh, me do it. No, <laughs> no, please, no. Me force a mouth open. No. There, Red Fox. Oh. I'm ready for food. Me put him in dry corn now. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> now you go to wiki up. Maybe old man dream of plenty water. Come, old Mexican dog. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. For two more days, the Lone Ranger was forced to work in the hot sun, forced to eat the dry, mashed corn, forced to suffer the pangs of extreme thirst. A weaker man would have collapsed, but the seething anger that welled within him seemed to give the Lone Ranger strength to go on in hopes that soon new captives would arrive and he'd learn the secret of their capture. On the third night, as the Lone Ranger lay on his bed of boughs in the ill-smelling wickiup of Red Fox, the beat of Tom Tom should have warned him of something unusual. Instead, the monotonous beat served only to quicken the fever in his brain as he tossed and muttered in near delirium. Water. Must have water. Can't stand it any longer. I'll have to give up. Must give up. No way to escape now. How can I go? The signal. I'll give Tunnel the signal. <laughs> the doorway. Oh, the air feels good. Must give signal. Tunnel will come. I, I can't. My throat too dry. <coughs> no use. I, I waited too long. I won't give up. I won't. I have to go on somehow. Somehow. Oh. Within a few moments, the cool night air revived the Lone Ranger. He opened his eyes. Then as the beat of the tom-toms reached his fevered brain, he struggled to his feet. <laughs> Those tom-toms must go make them stop. Must find water. Nothing matters now. I'll... Oh. No, no, I, I can't give the signal. My mind is playing tricks. I... I... I did hear it. I did. Tano. Tano. Back here, Kimasabi. Back a wiki up. You come inside. Tano. Kimosabi. You come. I tried. I. No, Kimosabi. Do not let Apaches hear. Water. Here. Water. Here. here. You drink. 
Easy, easy, keep us happy. Take too much now. Tala, Tala, you came just in time. Uh, me watch. Me see you stand in door. See you fall. Me sneak through back way. Bring water, food here. Here, plenty food here in that sack. Here now, you eat. Oh, thank you. Uh, Water's made me feel better already. Oh, that good. You leave with Tonto. Huh? No, this is what I needed most, Tonto. Something's going to happen tonight. Those Tom Toms. Uh, me hear them. Apaches watch the south of village. Maybe someone come. Yes. This is what I've been waiting for. I'll rest a bit and try to find out what's going on. Here, let me bring your guns. Good. Here. Now you wear them under clothes now. Yes. They've already searched me. They won't suspect I have them. There. How did you get through, Tonto? If you'd been seen, I don't. Uh, you take a look. What? Oh, so that's it. Uh, me wear disguise, too. He picks up like Apache Brave. Uh, what me do now, Kimasami? We'll need help, Toto. Uh, me ride scout cross the river. El Paso on the other side. Me find troops there. Good. Now, hurry, Toto. When you get back, have the troopers move in quietly on the edge of the village behind Chief Colorado's wiki up. Give our signal as soon as you arrive. Uh, and when you hear a shot, have them right in, fighting. Uh, let me go now. Adios, Kimasami. Adios. After Tonto left, the Lone Ranger rested for several hours. When he wakened, the tom-toms had stopped, but he heard the sound of great excitement in the village. At that moment, Red Fox entered the wiki up. You come. Me show old men, plenty Mexican friends come live with Apaches. Poor Juan Gonzalez here so weak, Senor Red Fox. She is not able for to watch Apaches torment his country. Get no, up, no, feeble no. dog! Oh, see, see, Senor, please. Please, you do not kick poor Juan some more. Oh. You go! Oh. 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 Ah, that is good. They come to village, you see? Moon give plenty light. I saw them all right. I can't believe it. American soldiers bringing in Mexicans. Old man change. Stand tall, talk deep. Yes, and he hits hard, you dirty redskin. That makes me feel even better. I move up toward the chief's wiki up where the crowd is. Keeping to the shadows, the Lone Ranger made his way to the back of the chief's quarters. And he edged forward to watch and listen. Our pale-faced friend has kept his promise. He has done well. Tonight he has brought us eight Mexicans. I still can't believe those were American soldiers. Yet those uniforms... Come on, okay. Friend of Apaches, come. Make talk with Chief Colorado. Oh. Our Chief Colorado. Lieutenant Jones and Indians in American uniforms. We have had to move with caution, O Chief, because of one who has been commissioned to spy upon us and to bring punishment upon the Apaches and their friends. But we've outwitted him so far. Yet it's better that you move on tonight with the captives and trade them to tribes further north. Our good friend speaks wisely. Chief Colorado will send braves with captives tonight. <laughs> Send her back to the other. See, that is the one. It is that traitor, that dog of a lieutenant. 
Who is this sailor, Loretta? Will kill him now. Oh, oh my oh. shoulder, she stabbed me. Take her away. Let me take a knife from she No, oh, you let me go. Lolita, she will not live for to stay with Apache. That wild cat should be killed. Uh, uh, has wounded our friend. Revenge is his. She shall die. No, no you cannot. You dare not. Tie her to the post, sir, little wolf. Then you can throw the first tomahawk. Oh, no, no, please, you must not be. You be still. Squaw tied now. All right, little wolf. You can have the pleasure of throwing your tomahawk. Oh. Now me throw tomahawk. No, you won't. Stop! The people will. Jim has done. Your dealings with Jones are an end, Chief Colorado. That voice. I recognize it. He's the spy. Get him. Kill him. The trooper. As the troopers moved in upon them, the Apaches were momentarily thrown into panic. Acting quickly, the Lone Ranger released the Mexican woman, Lolita, before Lieutenant Jones or the Apaches knew what was happening. There. Quick, take me to the others, your Mexican friends. See, si. si, Lolita, she will take you there. We go pronto. Following Lolita, the Lone Ranger reached the wiki up in which the captives were held. He was none too soon. The two Apaches left to guard the prisoners stood over the shivering group with upraised tomahawks. Oh, stop them. Stop them, senor. <laughs> You have wounded him. You have saved my people from these savage devils. Oh, may heaven bless you, senor. See, si, see, si, he has saved us. He too is Mexicano, no? Si, it's Verdana, Lita. Oh, tell them it is not so, senor. It is for a woman to know you are not old. You are not Mexican. You're observing, Lolita. Now, all of you, come with me. Si, si, senor. Si, senor. Si, senor. Si, senor. Si, Good to see you again, old boy. Otto, have the troopers rounded them up, including the American officer? Ah, here come Captain the troops. Him have prisoners. Good. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, tell me, Emil, where's the man who sent for us? <laughs> Him here, Captain. You mean that, <laughs> that elderly Mexican is the one who sent for us? Oh, the moon, she is so bright, Senor Capitan. But you do not see. The age, she does not have such straightness of figure nor such brightness of eye. He is fixed up for to fool people, no? Yes. If it hadn't been for that one, things wouldn't have turned out this way. Captain, before I lose my temper, and I think it's about due, I'll leave these good Mexican people in your charge, Steady. Easy, big fella. Just wait a minute, sir. After Thank all, you for you... coming, Captain. See that that dirty traitor and his renegade band get what's coming to them. Adios. Well, they should take it. I don't know that man. Oh, but Lolita, she know enough about him for to know to know him more better, Senor Capitan. To him, all Mexico will give blessings. Oh, uh, talk sense, woman. Uh, he poses a Mexican to fool the Apaches. He's a master of disguise. I wish the Apaches had done away with him when they captured him. Ah, that is to make Lolita laugh, Senor Traitor. I have heard that voice before through a mask. A mask? Si, Senor Capitan. And Lolita has seen that most beautiful white stallion before. That horse he calls Silver. Silver. Ah, you see, Senor Capitan, all of these Apaches and Mexicanos alike are knowing Lolita speaks of the man of the silver bullet, the mask rider who is called the Lone Ranger. Ah, such a man he is.
The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.